everyone, Kaylee here. Today I want to go over some bobby pin basics. A lot of you guys have been asking for a video on just how to use bobby pins. So I thought I'd show you guys some basic tips and tricks. But if you're interested in learning more, tell me in the comments because I'm thinking about making this a series. I'd love to give you guys like really in-depth videos on this. So if you want it, let me know. But today let's go over some of the basic things that you need to know to use your bobby pins the right way. Tip number one is to start with a good bobby pin. Now, you can get all the right techniques and everything going, but if you're working with a flimsy bobby pin, it still might not stay in place. So you have to pick a good one. So here's what to look for when you're looking for a good bobby pin. Spoiler alert, I love the Metagrip Premium Bob Pins from Sally's Beauty. These are some of the best. And what I like about them, first of all, is that they have a very tight grip. It's actually a little bit difficult to pull them apart, which is good, because that means these two guys are holding on really tight. So they're gonna be holding your hair together really tight once they're in there. Next, I think it's good to look for like beveled edges around the sides of the bobby pin, because that just means that there's a little bit more quality and thought put into it. And third, wanna make sure that these tips are well coated and the little coating is not coming off because it hurts like crazy if there's not anything covering the sharp corners on these bobby pins. And so if you have those three components, you are well on your way to bobby pinning really well. All right, tip number two is that you can't put a ton of hair into one bobby pin. This is not Superman or Wonder Woman or anything. It can't lift crazy heavy stuff. Actually, the opening of a bobby pin is the amount of hair that you're supposed to put in. You're not supposed to actually open it up to put it in. You're just supposed to put in this little bit. And um, that can seem very counterintuitive, but when you actually just use that much, it becomes a lot more effective. That being said, I will often open up my bobby pins about half an inch and use that, but I won't use any more than that because at that point you're compromising what the bobby pin can do for you. Tip number three, if you have thick hair, use a jumbo bobby pin or a roller pin. Same thing, different name. They are much bigger than their bobby pin counterparts and they can hold so much more. If you guys watched my 100 layers of hair extensions challenge, I put five pounds of hair into a bun using only seven of these, which I think is a big deal. And it actually felt really secure at the time too. So if it can do that, it can hold up your half up too. You'll be fine. I really recommend these. If you have trouble with bobby pinning, if you have thick hair, they're a must. Okay, we're getting serious. I've got a braid and I'm actually gonna show you guys in the next three tips how to put bobby pins in. So tip number four is that you want to make sure you're not just grazing the surface. I see that a lot with people where they kind of just go across the very top layer of the hair and they don't ever actually get all the way down. All right, so right now I have it just over the surface and you can tell that it's just over the surface because I can pick it up like this. And then if I shake my head really hard, it's gonna come out super easily. See, it's all gone. Instead, you want to actually feel that bobby pin scrape against your head as you go. So I'm gonna do that little half inch opening thing. And then I'm gonna take the bumpy side down and I'm going to scrape that against my head as the top goes over the piece that I'm pinning. And then I'm gonna keep pushing. I'm gonna keep feeling that bobby pin against my head. And now it's in place. And now if I try to lift up that section, it's not coming up because it's literally attached to my roots. And there you go. That is, even with shaking it, it all stays in place because you get all the way down and you get all the layers instead of just a couple working for you. Tip number five is to pin the bobby pin in the direction you want it to go. Now that sounds kind of like, yeah, duh, but let me show you what I mean. If you pin with the bobby pin directly parallel to your head, it's gonna go in and sit just like so. This way is really good for securing sections in place. I call it like structure work, like you're actually making the structure of the hairstyle. And that's a really great common way to do it. But then something that I see people do, especially when they pin behind their head, is that they pin out at an angle away from their head. So they'll go out like this, and the bobby pin is actually only attached in the front part, and the back is sticking out and it's not doing anything. That's really easy to do behind your head because the angle is already working in that direction. So you wanna fight that natural urge. But the other way that you can position it is going in towards your head, which is a great way to hide bobby pins. So you go in at this 45 degree angle and then you push and it's going to actually bury itself like it's diving under the surface of your hair. And then you have it nicely pinned back and you're not necessarily going to see all of the bobby pin. So basically pinning in the direction that you want it to go means either pin parallel to your hair or in 
diagonally towards your hair, whether you want the bobby pin to be visible or invisible. All right, and then tip number six is to lock it down. Now this is a way of putting in the bobby pin that will really hold things in place. First, you're gonna make a little circle right next to where you wanna pin it. And this kind of anchors the bobby pin into the hair. So I'm gonna make three little circles. One, two, three. And then you're gonna put the bobby pin into the hair that you're trying to pin. In this case, it's the twist. And then step number three of this little scenario is to totally flip the bobby pin the other direction. So you rotate it 180 degrees and then push it into the hair. And once you do that, this thing is locked down. This thing feels so secure right now, it's not going anywhere. And I actually did this on a bun for a workout class recently. I only had to use two bobby pins and the bun didn't move the entire class. So this definitely works. If you have thick hair, you have to try it out. If you have to hold your hair in place for a long time, try it out, it really works. And there you go, there are some basic tips and tricks on how to work bobby pins in your favor. I hope that you guys learned something new. If you wanna see more bobby pin videos, let me know in the comments below. We can get super detailed with this if you want to. That's it for today's video, guys. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, or even hit that little bell notification icon so you get a notification the second that I post a new video. I'll be back on Saturday with another hair tutorial, and I'll see you then. Mwah. Bye.